Hey there, Chef Jeff here at White Apron Catering in Lake Worth. Um, had some people asking about how would you make a roux, what do you do with it, and where do you go? So we're just going to jump right in and get started. Uh, a roux, if, if you think about it easy, it's equal parts of fat and flour. Um, typically I like to do that with, you know, it's traditionally done with weight versus volume, but it's not a lot different. Um, we're gonna, today we're going to make one and we're going to do it with uh, butter. So. I've got about four ounces of butter. We're just gonna pop that in the pan and let it start getting melted. All right, so we're gonna get this butter melted. And once the butter's melted, we're just gonna put the, the flour right in. Now, you can do, like I said, you could do oil. I wouldn't do any margarine or anything like that, but you could do oil or you can even do a mix. Um, a lot of the Cajun stuff and whatnot, you do like a pork fat or the you know your bacon grease or whatever you know you do your lard but we're gonna stay a little more traditional and, and do the butter um, you could use clarified butter but we're not going to just remember that the regular butter does have about 15 percent water weight in so that's gonna have to cook out and that's what you're seeing with these bubbles going right now you're seeing the water cooking out so once this gets nice and melted and combined we're gonna add our flour in and we'll whisk it in keep it so it's no lumps um, basically we're looking for a consistency of about wet sand there we go so we'll turn that down a little bit and now that the butter's all nice and melted and we're getting the oil out or getting the water out we're just going to add that in and then once it's all combined we can go to like a wooden spoon or something like that But we're going to try to get all those lumps out. And then you're going to see the color change come around. And that's what we're looking for here. It's going to go from this little brownish and as it cooks, it's going to start to lighten up a little bit. And it'll go through some color changes. And then depending on what your usage is, that's where you're going to be with where you want your roux to be. See how it's starting to lighten up already? So your first stage of the roux is going to be what they call a white roux. And that's just about where we're at now. And that's going to be two to three minutes, you know, one to three minutes, something like that, about where we're at there. And we can turn this down so it doesn't cook too fast. Your next stage is, what's, is about where we're going in another minute or two and that's going to be what they call a blonde roux and we've got a couple minutes but it'll start to darken up just a little bit and you'll smell a little bit of like a nutty a nutty nutty smell you know as the flowers start to, as the flowers starting to cook now it's important to use to take the roux and it, we're cooking it this will help get the flour flavor out of there, that raw flour flavor out of what we're going to use this for. And we'll use this in any variety of sauces or thickening or soups. But see where we're at now? Like I said, we're going to turn it down a little bit. But that's what I was saying about that consistency like a wet sand. See? This is about, so we're, we're just about at our point now where we got that nice blonde roux. So if you were doing a velouté or a chicken stock, something light, we'll do, we would go there. And if you keep cooking it, you're going to get a brown roux. And again, you don't want it to cook too fast. But the darker it gets, it'll also help keep your... Uh, whatever you're thickening dark. And it gives it a little richer, deeper flavor. But see how we're getting there? And now you're starting to get that deeper color. And you just want to keep stirring it, you know? You don't want it to, so it cooks real even. But see how it's darkening up there? That's beautiful. And we'll get, let this get almost like a caramel color. And that'll be our dark, our uh, brown roux. And that's what we'd use for, like, say, if we were making a 
espanol sauce or like a brown gravy or a, you know, a demi glace or any of those. And uh, we're just about there on that. But see, look at it, it's beautiful. And if you could use the, the smell of vision, you're going to smell that nutty, that nutty toasty flavor or the nutty toasty smell. I think Willy Wonka really should have come out with that smell of vision. That would be so great. But, now, I'm going to take it one step further here than, this, than our brown roux. And we're going to take it all the way to a, a dark roux. And now, I've taken this one all the way to what we call a dark roux. And typically, this would be used for your Cajun or your Creole cooking, you know, some of your African cooking, your, that kind of thing. But it's real dark. Now, as it cooks more, it gets thinner too. And you're going to get a little less thickening power from it. So, you know, typically, if you think about the thickening, the easiest way to remember that on your ruse is going to be a, uh, if you think, Three, four, five, six. So in a quart of liquid, three is going to get you just barely thickened. The four is going to get you kind of nice thickened, like a little bit of a sauce, soup, like a, like a thicker soup. The five is going to get you more like a nice heavy sauce. And the six is going to be like a thick gravy, like if you were doing biscuits and gravy. So three, four, five, six in a quart. And that's pretty much how you're going to think of the ruse. So there we go. There's our dark roux. And like I said, you saw the progression. And uh, that's, that's where we're at. So thanks for watching. Again, hope this helps. Let me know what you think. Again, as always, Chef Jeff here at White Apron Catering in Lake Worth. Enjoy, like, subscribe, and let us know what you think.